Welcome to Watch Mojo. Today's video comes from our gaming-focused channel Mojo Plays, where we dive deep into the biggest game releases, exciting franchises, up-to-date news, and gaming history and culture. Ranked lists, timelines explained, boss battles, hidden gems, we got it all. If you enjoy this video, head over to Mojo Plays for even more great gaming content. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we aren't just picking out the hardest bosses in Final Fantasy games, we're picking out the hardest final bosses in Final Fantasy games. Finally. Now let's finalize this Final Fantasy final bosses list and get to the finale. I think I'm so much funnier than I am. Let's go! Oh, also, we aren't including online games. Let's go for real! Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Omega. Much like Dark Souls, Final Fantasy 16 required understanding movesets and reacting appropriately. Now, although it wasn't actually Souls level difficulty, Omega in Final Fantasy 16 was exceptionally challenging due to its complex attack patterns, high damage output, and extensive health pool. It's more like a health ocean. Omega utilizes a variety of powerful abilities that require precise timing to evade and counter, and don't even get me started on the area of effect attacks. Omega is a total d the fight demands constant awareness and adaptability from the player as Omega frequently changes phases, each introducing new mechanics and increasing difficulty, which as you'll learn is a regular recurrence in Final Fantasy. Although Omega was technically the final boss of the DLC, we are including it because it is an Omega pain in the ass. Would you care to do the honors, Clive? <laughs> Sephiroth. Sephiroth is arguably the most iconic boss in the entire Final Fantasy series, and the guy needs no introduction. Still, for those unfamiliar, he is a highly skilled ex-war hero and the main antagonist of what is often considered the best Final Fantasy game. I, for one, prefer number six, but that's because I'm a contrarian and I hate being told what to think. It's easily the best in the series, but shut up. Say for Sephiroth, his ultimate form is a formidable foe, and I'm trying real hard not to repeat the gag from the intro. Ah, f*** it. Save for Sephiroth is a formidable foe and a final boss in the Final Fantasy game for real. While he will obliterate unprepared players, experienced Final Fantasy fans should still be able to strategize and overcome him quickly. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Zeromus. Final Fantasy IV's eerily impressive Zeromus might be the coolest looking boss in the entire series, especially in the recent Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster. He looks like a body horror Cronenberg monstrosity and we love it. His unsettling personality and backstory add to his impact, but that's a story for another list. Let's talk battle. Zeromus' two signature attacks are formidable, capable of wiping out the player's party quickly if not addressed. However, with efficient spell reflecting, Zeromus becomes more and more manageable. With a bit of practice, players can handle him with relative ease, but we aren't talking about those with practice. We're talking about those unprepared, and for them, it's a nightmare. Emperor. Although this game isn't the narrative masterpiece that you'd expect given what the series eventually became, it does still provide a massive challenge to players, and that's before you even get to the Emperor. As the final boss of Final Fantasy II, the Emperor's fight is relatively straightforward, but don't let the simplicity fool you. He is plain and simple, a tank. 
His relentless aggression, brutal health regenerating attacks, wide array of status effects and resistance to all elemental magic and status ailments makes him a formidable opponent. He would be higher on the list, except he is one of the easier bosses on this list to cheese as certain weapons are exceptionally effective against him. While he demands caution, experienced players with the right weapons will come out victorious after a death or two. Cloud of Darkness. Nothing makes my face more hot than the devastating particle beam attack performed by Cloud of Darkness in Final Fantasy III, which can severely damage or wipe out the party if the player is not adequately prepared. I was not adequately prepared, and now my PlayStation is not adequately not broken. This boss has high health and defenses, making the fight prolonged and grueling. Additionally, it often summons powerful minions to support it, complicating the battle to an annoying level. The Cloud of Darkness requires players to have well-leveled characters, optimal job setups, and effective healing strategies. It also requires the player to have a level head, no fragile objects near them, and an empty house in which to scream very, very loud. Neo X Death. Neo X Death may have a truly ridiculous name, but his appearance alone strikes fear into any player reaching the end of Final Fantasy V. As a purely evil non-human being, he isn't particularly relatable like Sephiroth, but this allows him to be a pure, unfiltered threat. Both creative and tricky, Neo X Death employs a wide array of strategies that he can rapidly switch between, and he bloody will. He is divided up into four parts, and when only one part remains, he unleashes a barrage of devastating attacks. Like a few other entries on this list, there are some cheap and easy methods to defeat him, and certain classes can be extremely effective when used well. I, for one, just stop and move on to the next game, because it's Final Fantasy VI, and it rules. Jet Behemoth. The final boss of Final Fantasy XIII Part Two consists of not one, not two, but three bosses working together. Jet Bahamut, Amber Bahamut, and Garnet Bahamut. Technically, we should pick one, and technically it should be Jet Bahamut, as he's the defeat you need to progress, but uh, technically they're a team, so technically shut up. In order to defeat Jet, you're going to have to drop the other two, as he cannot be targeted until they are dealt with. Oh, and also, they reappear shortly after dying, so act quick. This fight is one of the more engaging final bosses in the franchise, and requires a meticulous strategy to manage its daunting length, and potential for being overwhelmed. Kefka. For those familiar with the Matthew Final Fantasy lore, you'll know this is my favourite game, so don't be surprised when I say Final Fantasy VI Kefka is one of the best final bosses in the franchise, and way more interesting than Sephiroth's fight. He's also one of the most challenging. Some still hail Kefka as one of the greatest villains in video game history, and for good reason. His narrative is so disturbing, but we're just focusing on the final fight, so come back to another video for that. His attacks are incredibly powerful, his sprite, music and setting are impressive, and his chaotic Joker-like personality is iconic. This fight is everything. He starts each fight by reducing every party member's HP to one with his heartless angel attack, causing an indescribable panic. Ultimatia. Whether you're talking about the remastered version or the original release, Ultimecia is an undeniable force and deserves a few swear words when trying to fight her. Though her backstory is somewhat vague and confusing, one could argue she is a tragic character with motivations that are not entirely unjustified. Like Kefka, she can reduce the entire party's HP to one with her Hell's Judgment spell and absorb fallen party members if they're not revived quickly. This is the move that shits me the most. She dispels positive status effects and wields a devastating attack called Apocalypse, which causes massive damage to the entire party. 
Ultimicia easily earns her status as the second hardest final boss, and while some strategies can make her a little bit less deadly, there is no easy way to defeat her, except turning the console off or smashing it over your knee. Either will get the job done. Necron. Final Fantasy IX's final boss Necron is not difficult to rank. Most would agree, if you aren't including the online entries, that Necron is a great starting point for the hardest boss. Like Ultimecia, Necron is a well-designed boss without real weaknesses or cheap tricks, which is super unfortunate for those of us who like a good cheese method. Both bosses provide exhilarating, engaging battles that challenge even seasoned Final Fantasy players, but Necron edges ahead due to the extensive equipment and experience required for a decent chance at victory. Any party brave enough to face Necron must have a wide range of immunity abilities, solid supportive skills, and a foolproof strategy. Also, a wish a prayer and all denominations gods behind you. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos.